Hello, this is Pastor Matthew Woods from Grace Lutheran Church in New Albany, Indiana, and this is the weekly devotion for the first Monday in July, July 1, 2024. Today's title, Doing the Good That Needs to Be Done, Galatians 6, 1-10. Many of us have heard of Washington's crossing of the Delaware on Christmas 1776, and many of us perhaps have even seen the painting of Emanuel Lutz a German-born painter in 1850. It's a huge painting. It's 12 foot, basically 12 foot by 21 feet. Uh, and it's probably, they say, historically accurate for a couple of reasons. The size of the boat, George is probably standing heroically while rowing was done by the soldiers sitting down. Um, but accuracy was not the purpose of the painting. That's what we have to know. It was done to create inspiration for a revolution in Europe that eventually would come to fruition. The painting captures the most pivotal moment in the Revolutionary War. In 1776, it was cold, it was miserable. Uh, Washington, Washington had many defeats and men were abandoning the cause left and right. Disease and starvation were also claiming lives and morale had hit bottom. George needed a win. So Washington attacked the Hessian uh, military base at Trenton, New Jersey. Hessians are hired guns from Germany uh, who fought for the British. Christmas Day, 1776, Washington and his army quietly crossed the Delaware River, unbeknownst to the Hessians, who were celebrating Christmas and were pretty drunk. The cargo boats they crossed in were probably more like 50 foot long, uh, and able to carry horses, artillery, and lots of soldiers. And George was probably not standing either, by the way. With less than 10 losses, Washington captured over 8,000 Hessians. It was much a much-needed win. Uh, it was a huge morale boost and provided a strong motivator for recruiting and for carrying on the cause of liberty in the United States. It provided the motivation to carry on the war and eventually win it. Here we are 248 years later. Motivation is still one of the greatest battles we face. Being motivated to do anything is an eternal struggle. Somewhere inside of ourselves, a conversation happens over whatever. Uh, depending on what, it, what needs to be done, motivation becomes the right mixture of attitude, emotion, and energy to go do it. 2,000 years ago in Galatians 6, 9, and 10, Paul says, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time you will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Let's face it, <clears throat> being motivated, we have to believe that something good is worth our time and effort. There are actually two words of good, by the way, being used here. One is uh, kalos, first one. Let us not become weary in doing kalos, good, doing good. That's that outward thing. This is a praiseworthy goodness, something beautiful and inspirational, helping our neighbor with the lawn or when they're sick. <clears throat> On the other hand, there's another good. Let us do good to all people, agathos. The word is more intrinsic. Be the good that happens to the people. The greatest goodness we know is Jesus. Jesus is the personification of goodness. And what he does on Good Friday is the good produced. And we know what motivated Jesus. A nonstop love for humanity. The good works that that we do reveal who is inside of us, who's living there, Jesus in our hearts. For we are, as it says in Ephesians 2.10, we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared for us to do. Well, the goodness was the mark of the church also in the early days, both outwardly and intrinsically. In a pagan culture, Christians stood out because they cared for the sick the orphans, and the outcast. It was an inspirational time, and because of that, their witness, their work, 
the church exploded far and wide and became uh, ultimately a dominant force in the world. A distinction of what is good and what is not is something, however, we have to learn. Lord knows we need more good in our country right now. And it doesn't seem like a not a lot enough people are actually learning good from evil. We see the lines between what is good and what is evil has blurred tremendously. And that have, has, of course, been the devil's way. For example, verse 1 says, If someone is caught in a sin, you who are spiritual should restore him gently. Being spiritual is distinguished from being in the flesh, rather. Paul goes on to talk about sarks, or flesh, in verse 11, in terms of circumcision. Pressure was being put on Christians by others to be circumcised first before they could be Christians. <clears throat> Christians were giving into this notion in order to accept to be accepted by uh, other Jews rather than being persecuted by them. Christians give into a lot of things, however, that are not good in order to fit in. But in the end, we're not defending what is good. And, and for some, unfortunately, we buy into this modern secularist philosophies, believing them to be the good things we should be doing instead of what Jesus outlines. So there's a strong internal struggle when it comes to faith in these circumstances. Now we learn what is good from scripture. <clears throat> For example, consider what we actually learn about love. Love is good, but love without obedience to the word is not good. Love without forgiveness or compassion is not good. Love is only the mortar that connects the patience, the kindness, the forgiveness, the faithfulness, and the goodness, the self-control. Love without gentleness or respect is still just a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal, according to the scriptures. People toss around love pretty casually today. Love is love and that kind of thing, but it's not true. Love has a very specific look in scripture. We learn what love really is in Jesus. For, for Jesus, love was doing the Father's will on the cross. Jesus' love was demonstrated. It was sacrifice and hope. Being spiritual means learning and practicing spiritual things defined by God's word as the standard. Then we know that love is good. In spite of, in spite of all that is bad, Galatians 6 says, Don't give up on the good. To give up on good is easy. The hard work we know is finding the motivation to press on. It's hard work because we know inside of you and me is this internal conversation, as I mentioned before. Inside, we are evaluating whether something or someone is worthy of our time. Inside, our, we torture ourselves with what we, what we know we should do and what, we, what, what else we might do and, and really what we want to do. In the end, the hard work is a contest with ourselves. Unfortunately, that usually that's usually a battle within our sinful nature as well. We are sinners, so generally we aim for what is selfish or easy. Note, uh, so note the point. You are not only the one who uh, you're not the only one who struggles with the motivation at times. So let's take a look at some thoughts on this, this observations about motivation. Let's carry on with this a little fuller. The motivation to do good requires humility, for example, to put good before oneself. Paul says, restore someone gently. But he also says, watch out or you too will be tempted, tempted by anger or impatience or saying something that breaks another person's spirit, which is not the way we do it. No, instead, Paul says, um, restoring one another, another person, isn't about you. Paul is warning us against pride here. If our focus is self-fulfillment or, uh, or, or uh, gossip material or winning an argument or looking important, you're missing the point. The point is to restore your brother, not compare yourself to your brother. Uh, remember the Pharisee and the tax collector who went to church in Jesus' parable, Luke 18? The Pharisee went up to the front pew and he and he said he prayed to the God and he morsely said, uh, you know, this is who I am. You should think I'm awesome. 
And the other the other fellow, the tax collector, he goes to the back of the church, he beats his chest and says, I'm not worthy to be here. And, he, and Jesus says, the one who is who humbles himself before the Lord will be exalted, and the one who exalts himself will be humbled. So we want to remember those things. It's not a contest. When the disciples were arguing about, among themselves about who is the greatest disciple, Jesus, he takes a towel, wraps it around his, his waist, and he washes the disciples' feet, and he becomes an example to them. In an act of humility, Jesus demonstrates how to take the, the focus off oneself, Love one another as I have loved you, Jesus taught. Jesus was humility incarnate. He was meek, meaning he had the power to do anything he wanted to. But instead, he, does, uh, he, he dies for sinners. Humility brings more good than pride does. Good has the power, by the way, to offer more motivation because humility will experience gratitude more often, giving thanks for what one has which in the end will bring more peace as well. There is a greater fulfillment in accomplishing something good and, with a, and it brings about a greater peace. All those things come together. Peace then leads to generosity. Generosity leads to motivation, more of that, driven by a godly love. It's, it's very circular. It generates itself. And one who is humble is more likely to take responsibility for oneself rather than blame others that their plans have got have gotten messed up and again one only need to look at jesus to understand the depths of true humility and then all the joy that comes with that the peace that comes with that and the desire to do more with that so here we are motivation 248 years ago our country set out with a revolution however the real revolution is happening inside of ourselves every single day uh, to get get up the motivation to do some good the world can use a lot more goodness let's let's be honest especially in these days we all know uh, by god's grace we are we are it we are the good the embodiment the people of god who bring that good and may the good by god's grace be able to carry on may we do good by god's grace our families our faith our neighbors and ourselves are more blessed when we find the motivation to carry it out and that's the goal may god bless us uh today and this week to do some good may we celebrate the good that we see around us and may we have eyes to see what is good and focus on those things and therefore be motivated more motivated to do what god has called us to do let us not give up in doing good in the name of jesus our lord and savior amen well, may the Lord bless your week. <clears throat> may the Lord bless you. And I thank you for being with me today. And I look forward to seeing you next time. The Lord be with you. Thank you. Bye-bye.